Hey internet, how are you? Or at least I guess the fraction of the internet that can see this video. I received a question last night, sort of essentially saying that, hi, we use C and C++ very heavily, and there is lots of code that is in place to defend against null pointers. Does Rust solve the billion dollar mistake? I've been thinking about how to respond. I've been wanting to sort of say, yes, of course it does. <laughs> I've also wanted to say, well, it kind of, it mostly does when there's sort of an asterisk, you know, when you don't use unsafe. Uh, and the next few minutes, I hope to be able to provide an answer to anyone that has this question and probably provoke some uh, opinionated people's responses, which I actually very much encourage because this is a very fundamental part of software that is not completely solved. You can kind of gather from my hesitancy just like less than a minute ago that even Rust has not perfected the problem. But let's first describe the problem, and then I will uh, actually we'll stop. We'll start with the, with with the the upshot. So yes, I think that Rust is a very good step towards uh, memory safety, and does actually solve for most purposes the billion dollar mistake. There are some caveats or some sort of uh, you know footnotes that are, and I'll go through that shortly. But the headline is that Rust solves the billion dollar mistake. I would be pretty happy with that headline. So what is the problem? So let's explain the problem, and then uh, let's explain my uh, let's explain why I think that Rust solves the problem, and then talk a little bit about some of the technicalities uh, or at least the reservations about that answer. So the billion dollar mistake is this idea that the uh, that programming languages introduced a uh, the ability to create a pointer to memory that is guaranteed to be invalid. And you might think, well, why on earth would I would you let that happen? <laughs> and in fact, many people did at the time. So uh, back in the seventies and eighties when uh, C, the C programming language was becoming more and more popular, there was another branch of, in fact, multiple other branches of programming. One of them was uh, Pascal, which was very, very heavily used, which did not have this um, feature. Anyway, C decided to uh, enable you to create a pointer or refer to a memory address with uh, that was guaranteed to never actually be valid. So to the zero byte, and you can't actually put anything there at zero. Zero doesn't mean anything. And the reason why C did this was to allow this zero, zero, the, the byte at, at nowhere <laughs> to, be, to, to be designated as uh, the special place for like a missing value or like something that is not yet ready. So I might, for example, say that I want to have a, uh, I have a function that returns some file, and if there was a problem, I'm actually going to return none back. And so you get back a null pointer. And so if you ever want to use this function, you need to check, um, have I got a null pointer? Do I have a pointer to null, a pointer to nothing, a pointer to a region of memory that is guaranteed to, uh, to never actually have any valid data there? This problem is aggravated by the fact that optimizing compilers, so any compiler that you use today, will assume that you will n never intend to actually create a, an address of, you'll never attempt to refer to something that doesn't exist. There's a kind of a technical thorny issue in its own right, but it will, so, uh, essentially, you are allowing programmers to create programs that the compiler will think will never exist and therefore optimize around the problem and uh, 
And you essentially need to fight the compiler to say, no, 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 I actually meant this. Uh, the term null pointer is, um, sorry, with the compiler, so this is a, uh, this is, at the term there is undefined behavior. We want to be able to guarantee in our programs that undefined behavior will never exist because compilers will assume that undefined behavior does not exist and will work with that assumption when they are performing their optimizations. The opportunity to create null pointers presents undefined behavior and therefore the, the, the solution that Rust has uh, provided is to say that null pointers cannot exist in the language. Null pointers are guaranteed to never exist. This problem of the billion dollar mistake has other names. You might see the term null pointer exception in Java or null reference exception in C sharp, or you might find that null or undefined occurs in JavaScript, or you might have none in Python. You know, you have all of these instances where a variable might explode on you because it might be none, like it might actually be nothing. And this will never occur in a Rust program. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Why? How could it? How, how could you, how, how could that not work? And surely there isn't, surely the, there is a, uh, there is a reason why it exists everywhere else. If it, uh, why, how is it that Rust is able to do this? And surely there is a reason. And so let's, we need to, I need to unpack that slightly. So the, the general principle is that null pointers do not exist in the Rust programming language. You cannot create one. The type system will not allow you to. If you have a reference to some value, then it is guaranteed to be of valid, uh, pointing to a valid uh, place in memory. You can't, unless you really force yourself to, you cannot create a reference to the zero byte, like pointed to zero, pointed to null. And this is so, uh, and if you do, in fact, there's actually a thing in the standard library which says, if I, in the standard pointer module, which is a function which returns a null pointer. So it's like, Tim, stop lying to me. <laughs> I apologize for lying to you. Uh, you can create null pointers if you want them. But if you ever want to, what is known as dereference that pointer, if you ever want to actually pull out the value that you're pointing to and uh, treat it as if it is a value, Rust will require that you explicitly use the unsafe keyword. That is, it's okay to create a reference to null. At least uh, it's there, it's available to you. However, you cannot go and sort of go and look at null without saying to Rust that this is safe. So you're like, well, that's not enough. And the, the, I hear people saying, aha, aha, you're lying to me again. Unsafe means that Rust is not safe. And that is too strong of a statement, at least in my view. I'm happy to hear other people's views. So here is the reason. In most programs, you will never use unsafe. And therefore, to bring up unsafe as a reason why Rust is not safe by design, is a lie. Essentially, for 95, 99% of programs, there is no unsafe keyword ever in the program. In fact, it's very easy to uh, annotate your whole program or your whole crate and say, I never want to unsafe to exist here. The compiler will respect that annotation and will refuse to compile any program if you decide to add it into your program by mistake. But there are some instances in which you may wish to access memory, or at least you want to get something from some other place, like a periphery, like if you're on an embedded system, like a pin, or you might have received a pointer from a foreign function. So I might have like pulled in Zlib for compression. Uh, and I'm like, well, I need to be able to compress and decompress. And so Zlib will probably pass you a pointer 
which may be null because it was created in C land. And Rust's way of dealing with that is to say that uh, you, the programmer, need to check. And if it is null, and you want to create a valid reference to it, then you need to convert the C thing into something that Rust understands. And Rust understands the option type. Rust's option type is the answer about how you have the ability to speak about things that could be null with a, without ever crashing because of a null pointer exception. Every reference in Rust is guaranteed to be pointing to a valid memory address. There will be an actual object somewhere that is valid to access right now. That's the contract that the Rust compiler upholds. And you will never have this problem that you might try to access some variable and you find, oh, look, the whole thing blows up because none exists. And for the majority of programs, this is perfectly sufficient. And in those small number of programs where you are receiving a pointer from some other location via foreign function interface, via interfacing with the operating system, via operating interfacing uh, with hardware, you add one line, which is like, is this thing null? Like, is it equivalent to a, uh, is the address that the pointer is referring to zero? And if it is, that represents the none side on option, and otherwise we are we we use the sum side of option, which is just an enum defined in the standard library. Okay, so I've spent a lot of time talking. I'm very curious to now listen. So please hope I hope that uh, this has spurred some thinking, and uh, please add your questions, queries, comments, complaints, hopefully some compliments in the comments. Uh, and I wish you the very best for the rest of your day. Take care.